Hi, I'm Rick Buchler with GenState. I wanted to go over how to set up a web page in Bubble using uh, multiple different languages. I did a video of this before, but I think I skipped over a bunch of steps. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to show the diff two different ways that you can show your site in different languages and have your users select which language they would actually like to see it in. So we're going to use a blank page right here. And I've already set up a little um, button that we can use for your users to go ahead and make their selection. But we need to do some setup of things before we actually get to that point. What we're going to do is go to data and option sets. We need to do a um, option set for languages. And we're going to need to put in some details uh, about each language that you want to support that you can uh, so Bubble will support it, and also you can use your Google Translate for, which is another way of doing it as well. Uh, so we're going to have a new option set for languages. Language. And the different attributes, the display is good. Probably want a two-digit ISO code. And that's what you use with Google. You're going to want a four-digit ISO code. And that's to use with Bubble. They have their kind of own unique way of displaying it. And then just for fun, you're probably going to want to have a way to Come on. A way to show the, the language and how the speaker would understand. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So for the first option we're going to have is English. And this is going to be my default for me. So the different <clears throat> attributes for English. The two-digit code is EN, four-digit code is EN underscore US. And this is an important one because this is Bubble's default. So if there is no language parameter in the URL, this is what they're going to assume that it is. And speaker's glyph, English. And we can do some other options. So let's do French. So the two-digit ISO code. So if you want to find out what these are, you can look them up. So I've already gone ahead and found a couple of pages here. Uh, believe it or not, Bubble seems to use this form when you're using the four-digit. Two-digit is more standard. Matter of fact, the four-digit, I guess, isn't being used at all anymore except for, for Bubble. But the two-digit is what Google's going to be using. So we're going to look up French. And I'm way overdoing my little graphics card here. Okay, FR. I knew that, but I just want to show a way to kind of look up this code here. So, the code for French is FR. I know that the four digit is FR underscore FR. Yeah, so French, 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 French for French, FR, FR. And I know it's pronounced Francais, but I'm not a very good speller when it comes to that, so let's go ahead and use this. So this is translate.google.com. It's going to give me a nice spelling and using the crazy C thing and everything to make us look all fancy. We're setting this up. The speaker glyph is Francais. Excellent. Spanish, of course. And I will stop after this. 
yes, yes, yes. Hello. Guess I'll use the masculine form because why not? Feeling masculine. Okay, so now we have an option set for language. We're going to have our two digit ISO code, four digit ISO code, and a speaker's glyph. Um, so, yeah, so let's use this. So, we can use this on our page now to allow the user to select which language that they want to use. You can also you, you can add in a uh, data type in your user for language itself, so it can, your Google can look up what each user would like to choose, but you're not always going to have people that are logged in. So you might have people just coming to your site, in which case you want the, them to be able to choose their language without having to actually log in. What we're going to do is, when they click on this, it's going to The language that we're doing. <clears throat> so we're going to get data from the page URL. So what we're going to put in is a, a parameter in the URL language, LANG. And LANG is the parameter that Bubble looks for when it's deciding which language to utilize when it's displaying a page. <clears throat> so we're going to get lang from the page URL. And we can just display that. And that should probably work. That we can have it so when you press this button, you can make a selection. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's make a little pop up here. Okay. Make it um, 320. Leave that. It's good for now. Put in choose your language. And I'm being a little bit lazy here. The kind of the best thing you want to do is put something which is not in English, obviously. Uh, on my sites, I have a little picture that shows obviously you're trying to choose your language. But for now, we'll just say that's what we're doing so we can get through this, get up and going. Oh, I want to center that, make it a little bit bigger. Excellent. So there's some space in between here. Okay, so the next thing we'll throw in here is a repeating group. And this is going to be a repeating group that's going to show all the different languages that you support. So a repeating group right here. It's going to be a language. Data source is going to be all your languages. I'll change that in a second here. So let's throw in again. Come on. Come on. Oh dear. Try this again. Language, all languages, good. This text, let's make it our current cells language speaker's glyph. Go ahead and make this, <clears throat> excuse me, layout, come on. Oh. This a column. Now everybody's happy.
That looks good. Show all items immediately. I need to show that as a grid. Fit height to content. A little padding in there. Nice. Maybe do a little rounding. Everybody likes a little rounding. Got a little, a little more in there. Okay, so this is going to be our pop-up, which is going to be our choose language pop-up. So when we preview this, oh, that was silly. There's nothing showing it yet. So we're going to say when this gets selected. So let's go ahead and there it is. Start at a workflow. Group A is clicked. We're going to show the element, show our pop up, choose language. Sounds good to me. We should probably throw a little uh, close. When we do this for real, just throw an X in there so you can close the, the pop-up. Okay, so we click this. This is going to show. There we go. So we have our three languages that we have here, English, Francais, and Espanol. And we can do a little workflow to change the language parameter, which is up above, which uh, unfortunately you can't see in this screenshot. Apologies for that. Down here. Okay. So we want so when someone clicks on their language of choice, they uh, can see that language. So what we're going to do is going to change the lang, the lang parameter, up in the URL. So to do that, we're going to say, somebody clicks on here, we're going to go, go to page, we're going to send more parameters to the page, L-A-N-G, current sales languages, four digit ISO code. sense. Okay. So let's try that. I'm going to check the preview of that. Good. Francis. And up at top, LANG equals FR underscore FR. Good. Again, I'm sorry you can't see that up there. So now up on the, uh, the URL, it has um, and language equals fr underscore fr. So what that means is we can now start here, leave that alone, throwing in things. So let's throw in a little text here. So we can use the app text feature. App text question mark. So let's do All right to find another text. This is the first example. Same thing, app text. This is example number two. This, this 
look different. Okay. So now if we preview this, there's no translation. And true, I have it in being French. Even in English, there's no translation because we wouldn't have to set that in Google. In Google, excuse me, in Bubble. So if you go to your languages page here, settings, languages. So the English versions, you can see that something is not here. And you can put that in for the English version. What makes it a little bit easier is after you've been doing it for a while, go ahead and export it to the languages that you want to support. So we're doing English, CD, English. We are doing French. And we're doing Spanish. Notice Bubbles using the, uh, the four digit ISO code with an underscore, not a dash. I'm going to export that. I'm going to use Google Sheets to manipulate it. I'm going to import that latest CSV. the data. Okay, I'm going to look for blanks, basically. Just a few. So I'm going to take the text code here, make sure it's in English, but do French and Spanish Go to translate, and you can go ahead and paste that list as a list, and it'll come out as a list. Copy that, go back to my Google Sheets. What language is that? Spanish. Which is terrible, have no memory. All right, French. Now we need to copy this and put it into another sheet and download this. It's a CSV so we can re-upload re it back into Bubble. Six elements, sounds good. Got it. So now when we go to this page here, you can say in English, then if we use our, it'll pop up to change languages. Let's do Spanish. You see the Spanish version. So I hope that makes sense how to set it up so that you can uh, change the um, language parameter up in the URL. Another way of doing it is to actually use Google Translate. And by utilizing the languages feature in Bubble, you can control what the translation is. So if, if there's a better translation, uh, you can make that sometimes Google Translate does a great job, but occasionally there's just something that's just really off. So the preferred way, I think, of keeping control of the translations is using the languages feature built into Bubble. But sometimes it doesn't work, and it definitely does not work with option sets. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do that. So let's do an option set for, like, type of dogs. Corgis, type of dog, text. 
Oh, no, that was wrong. Hang on. It's an option. Corgi's an option. And let's do a pug. Pug. Pet the dog. And what's another type of dog? Golden Retriever. Apparently I angered it. Yeah, I know, I spelled that wrong. Good, okay. Okay. <clears throat> So let's say we're going to throw in an option here. So instead of an app text, we're going to do get an option. Type of dogs. Golden Retriever. Okay, so in this example, there is really no good way of translating. You can't use app text in the option sets. So if you want to have it translated, you're going to have to do it via the Google Translate way. You could actually take it back. You could do it conditionally. You can say when the get data from page URL, parameter name language, is not, or even better, hang on, is French, You can just put it in manually. So you want to say golden retriever. Ooh. What a nice name for golden retriever in Spanish. But actually we were doing French, weren't we? Golden retriever in French is golden retriever? What? <laughs> That doesn't, uh, that doesn't, that's not helpful at all. Let's do the Spanish version. Okay, back to where we were. So let's look at that. So English, that works out well. If I do French, it's not gonna <clears throat> it's not gonna change. But if I go ahead and do Spanish, it's going to change that based on the conditional state statement that we put in there. And the, <clears throat> the first app I did, I did this. I put in a, a manual translation for all the different things. It took forever. And so I don't recommend doing that. What you can do though is go ahead and do a translation via Google Translate. To set that up, you're gonna to need to have the plugin for it. I like this one. <clears throat> you're gonna to need to have an API key for this. So you go to uh, console.cloud.google.com and you set up an account, make sure you have billing set up and you can um, search for that. Set up your account. So if you haven't done that, it, it takes some time to do that. Uh, but once you do that, you can go ahead and get your key and put it in there. I'm going to go ahead and pause while I put that key into here so that you can't see the key. So hold on just a minute. OK, 
Okay, I'm back. I put in the uh, API key from Google, so hopefully that'll make this work, but we will see. Okay, so let's do a translation of this. Let's say that if the language parameter, L-A-N-G, is not, English, en underscore us, we're going to do a translation here. This is a get, get data from an external API. API providers can be Google Translate, Translate Text. Okay, so the parameter source is English, en. Now we want to do the target parameter. And what that's going to be is we're going to insert get data from page URL language. Actually, that's not going to help at all. Never mind. Let's try this again. We want to get an option. Come on. Sorry. Google Translate. Get an option. Option set languages. Do all options. We're not going to know what it is ahead of time. We're going to get all options and then we're going to filter that. So filtered. Say this language, so this is this, this four digit ISO code is, now we're going to get the lang language parameter. All right, very slow. Okay. All language filtered, first items, two-digit ISO code, because we're working with Google Translate now. Okay. So that's the target based on what the user has chosen, and that's what's up in the uh, URL right now, LANG parameter. And the actual text itself is going to be Whatever this is called. So text golden retrievers do. Maybe we can say this text. This text. No. No, that's, that doesn't make sense either. Sorry. Let's go back to the act, the first thing we're doing here. Golden Retrievers display. That's right. Sorry. I get there eventually. Get an option. I'll actually, stop doing it from there. Just copy expression. Casey expression. Okay. And the parameters can be text when it comes out. Good. So we're going to do the tr translate text translations. First items, translated text. Okay. And if this works, that's great. Now, if you want to do additional text using this, go ahead and copy this, paste it.
So that should be set up. So is this going to work? Let's find out. So it's in Spanish right now. I'm going to put this back in English so I can see how things look. Golden Retriever and Corgi. I don't want to confuse things, so I'm going to remove. Already did. Never mind. Okay, let's go back to our page. Trying. Okay. So we change to French, for example. Retriever Dory or Corgi. Let's try Spanish. There we go. So apparently Corgi is the same no matter what language is it in. Good to know. But as the languages are changed, an automatic translation is happening through Google Translate. So that's the, another way of doing the translations. So I think that pretty much covers it, how to do the different translations here. Um, maybe I can show user, how to set language parameter in a user. And this you're going to want to point to the option set. So in this case, you can make a workflow. So instead of coming up with this particular pop-up, say this is someone's, has their name, has their chosen language, and you can choose which language it is. Except for changing the LANG parameter, you can have it so that it changes that, uh, puts that in their, their record. So it's on there, then you can have upon page load, and then when current users language is not English, current language is not English, we're going to Add an action. There we go. We're going to navigate. We're going to go to a page, current page. We're going to send more parameters to the page. Users, language, or digital ISO code. And that should do it. We probably need a couple more things to, to make it work, but you can probably figure it out from there. If not, let me know. Give me a little shout, and we will we'll figure it out together. Hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions about this, please let me know.